Welcome to Key Tech. Please describe this channel if you are interesting in today's video. The reason why Foxconn was able to succeed was mainly because Terry Go made the decision to build a factory in the mainland, which happened to catch up with the spring breeze of China's reform and opening up. China also provided preferential policies such as land use and tax exemptions, as well as sufficient cheap labor. However, after its rise, Foxconn only recognized the credit of its financial sponsor Apple. In order to cling to its thighs, it actively went to India to invest in building factories and transfer production capacity. Now Tata has made another move, and Foxconn never dreamed that the reversal would be so fast. The reason why Foxconn went to India to build a factory was, on the one hand, because of Apple's call. Apple did not want to put all its eggs in one basket and wanted to build a supply chain backup, and Foxconn responded actively, mainly to continue to obtain Apple orders in India. On the other hand, India's population advantage is evident, and local labor is cheaper, so Foxconn wants to reduce costs in India. In addition to the above two reasons, Foxconn overestimates its own ability. Terry Go can say building a factory in the mainland is to give you a reward for eating as proof, as if Foxconn can succeed wherever it builds a factory. As expected, after investing and building a factory in India, Foxconn soon tasted all kinds of bitter fruits. Indian labor is cheap, but the quality is generally low, the quality of assembled products is not up to standard, and there are often accidents such as worker strikes, looting, and fires. These only cause economic losses. The key is that the local supporting facilities are very imperfect and the business environment of local enterprises is also very poor. The most typical example is the acquisition of Wistron. Wistron and Foxconn are both foundry manufacturers. They went to India to invest and build factories first, but they had to be acquired by India's Tata Group. In the end, Wistron could only announce its full withdrawal from the Indian market. You know, India's actions against foundry companies have just begun. After all, the development of foundry business is not very large. Even if it is true, after the Tata Group acquired Wistron, it began to negotiate with the foundry factory Pegatron, and the next one may be Foxconn. Foxconn is still expanding its investment in India. If it sees the experience of Chinese mobile phone manufacturers, I am afraid it will be completely panicked. Previously, in order to develop local mobile phone manufacturers, India also actively invited mainland Chinese mobile phone manufacturers to develop and promised to provide various preferential policies. So mainland mobile phone manufacturers such as Xiaomi, OPPO, and Vivo came to India to develop. Under the active operation of Chinese mobile phone manufacturers, mainland mobile phone manufacturers soon occupied most of the Indian smartphone market. Before 2022, Xiaomi surpassed Samsung many times and occupied the first place in the Indian mobile phone market for many consecutive years. But later it was suppressed by India. India continuously used relevant laws and regulations to point out that mainland mobile phone manufacturers were suspected of violating money laundering laws and other regulations suspected of illegally transferring funds abroad, etc., and then either fined or frozen funds. India's continued suppression caused Xiaomi's market share to plummet, 
and Samsung regained the first place in the Indian market. That's not all. In addition to investigating and finding mainland mobile phone manufacturers, India also wants to replace them. To this end, India has introduced strict policies requiring mainland mobile phone manufacturers to introduce Indian equity partners in their businesses. At the same time, it requires that Indian nationals must be appointed to key positions such as CEO, COO, CFO and CTO, and that manufacturing operations be outsourced to Indian cooperative manufacturers to improve local manufacturing levels. Recently, India's Tata Group is negotiating with mainland manufacturer Vivo to acquire at least 51% of its shares. Due to the continued suppression of the Indian government, mainland mobile phone manufacturers such as Vivo are being forced to sell at least 51% of the shares of their Indian subsidiaries so that they can continue to operate in the Indian market. Obviously, India is simply robbing. It can be seen how big the appetite of India's Tata Group is, and it is taking the opportunity to expand its influence in the electronics manufacturing industry. At present, the Tata Group has become the Indian foundry of Apple iPhone through the acquisition of Wistron, and is also negotiating with Pegatron to acquire a majority stake in its Indian factory. Once the acquisition is completed, the next target will be Foxconn India. The goal of the Tata Group is to become the largest Apple iPhone foundry in India, and for this purpose it has begun to dig technical talents from Foxconn India at a high price. If this trend continues, Foxconn's Indian factory will also be difficult to escape the fate of being acquired by Tata. Because India has always been known as the graveyard of foreign companies, they initially offered preferential treatment to invite them to build factories and develop, and then began to reap the benefits after they developed. Not only mainland mobile phone manufacturers, but also giants such as Samsung, Microsoft, and Google have suffered losses in India. Some foreign media said that the Tata Group's acquisition again may have made Foxconn realize how cruel the Indian market is. Thank you for watching this video.